Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In a previous video I had introduced a Mars landing script for the SpaceX Starship and we see it working here. In that video it landed a little bit hard, I've done some tweaking, but the margins are really tight on that. Uh, in particular the, the amount of throttle range difference is less than 1% to uh, when it comes to the difference between a uh, soft landing and a hard landing. So. It's tricky. It's a little bit of a tricky business and we also need to be careful to make sure to kill our horizontal velocity enough, horizontal speed enough, so that the landing gear doesn't have problems and it doesn't tip over. So yeah, there's a lot to handle, but uh, so far it's working well enough. But this video is not about this in particular. Starship will eventually become the target of another landing. But the goal is to develop the ability to land things close together on Mars, which I'm still far away from, let me just warn you, but uh, we are working on that. Uh, I also need to work on introducing some of the elements of the shuttle re-entry and landing script uh, for Starship so that it can control, of its, control its landing better because if you take a look at the window, the KOS window in the upper left there, it says target distance is about 30 kilometers or so. So we're far away from where it was supposed to land, but it can manage that by managing its pitch and stuff like that while it's coming in. It's a lot harder to do that around Mars than around Earth because of Mars's thin atmosphere though. But I'm not only going to be landing Starship on Mars, in fact I might not be primarily landing Starship on Mars because Starship is really hard to refuel, we'll discuss that later. But for instance we have here the Little Bopper Pizza Hab, and this is my my pizzeria for the moon and Mars and maybe beyond, uh, being landed by an orange, an orange with uh, eight engines actually. The normal orange has four, so this is an expanded orange because I found out while four engines was good enough for the moon, we needed eight for Mars. And this is actually a scaled up orange also because the payload is rather heavy. Uh, you can see the vessel mass at the bottom there. But this is of course a very different situation than Starship, so the script is different as a result. But we are using the ballistic coefficient to calculate the landing for this as well. It calculates the, uh, the location where it does the retro burn and also the periapsis that it ends up at based on the ballistic coefficient, which is the mass divided by the area of the heat shield or the area that's going to be hitting the atmosphere with. That's the idea anyway, but accuracy has been a little bit hard to come by for various reasons. We clearly overshoot Starship, but also overshoot our target distance. So Starship fell short, this went long, and it went long a uh, little bit further than Starship went short, I think. But here we are landing it, and so does the Sky Crane model, which is one way of landing things on Mars, of course. We use the parachutes, that helps reduce the amount of Delta V that we need. And that was the heat shield exploding which we separated earlier. Inflatable heat shields are helpful. Now this is all from a set orbit around Mars. I'm just using the cheat menu to cheat them into Mars orbit for the testing purposes. So this is all consistent and we're landing fairly equatorially as you can tell by the coordinates in the lower right. So that's just simple though. The script can handle all sorts of inclinations. That aspect of it is based on the space shuttle and the space shuttle had to do 28 degrees, 51 degrees from ISS and also a polar orbit. So that uh, the inclinations aren't gonna be a problem if we can get this right at all. But yeah, it was just easier to do equatorial as far as using the cheat menu, <laughs> sorry. So anyway, the inclinations aren't gonna be a problem I don't think. So this is the ISRU unit. That is one that I made a while ago. I've used it in the solar system tourism series for the moon, but Mars is a little bit trickier. And we've got Arizine NTO RCS, but it's mainly methane and oxygen, including these retro thrusters. This has the unique situation for the purposes of the KO script of not controlling from the right location, right? It's not controlling such that it's going in retrograde or prograde. It's controlling so that it has to be radial up. Uh, so that's awkward in a little bit. Then the th it's a little bit imbalanced uh, around certain axes, so that's why the thrusters are still firing like that. But actually, uh, during the initial retro burn to uh, get our re-entry orbit, it needed to thrust limit one of the engines because 
it while it's balanced without the heat shield, it's imbalanced with the heat shield. The heat shield isn't exactly perfect for this either. We don't have a back shell on this. So you can see that the lander is overheating a bit there, but eventually it stops that once we slow down. So it's within safe tolerances, I guess. And here we are coming in. But we are far, far, far away from, from Starship or from our intended location. So the calculation, the formula that I used to uh, calculate the deorbit periapsis and the deorbit location based on the ballistic coefficient was not good for this. Well, it was. It turned out different for this than it did for the pizzeria lander. So that's not ideal, right? They should end up in the same location even if it's the wrong location. So the formula is messed up somehow. And ultimately I'm just gonna have to collect data for it. I don't necessarily trust trajectories working with this. It might, uh, but I'll just do testing. I'll just experiment. It's somewhat fun anyway. So we are more than 100 kilometers away from where we ought to be. I make the adjustments. There is a certain relationship between the deorbit periapsis and the distance that I know from previous testing. So I just basically shift the deorbit periapsis down for this to compensate for that. And I actually aim for Starship rather than the place that Starship was supposed to end up. The pizzeria was aiming for the place that Starship was supposed to end up. But of course, with just the heat shield and no aerodynamic surfaces, it's very hard to aim for a particular location properly unless you have an offset center mass, which we didn't on the pizzeria one. Uh, here we have an offset center mass, but it's not offset enough or in the right way. But having compensated for the gap, I was able to get this, well, about 10 kilometers away from Starship, which is close enough that we can drive over there, which I intend on doing. Of course, we have the wheels. The wheels are here for a reason. Now, this has a nuclear reactor on it, so we don't necessarily want to close to Starship. As far as putting an ISRU system on Starship directly instead of having a separate ISRU system, the reason we don't do that is because I'm powering it with a nuclear reactor. Um, so, yeah. But uh, for well, a cargo uh, Starship could potentially carry it, and, but it'd have to have an automated way of getting off of that. So that's, I don't actually know how to get things off of starships just yet. So that's a whole other thing. This ISRU unit was meant for smaller landers than starship, of course. It's not meant to refuel starship. We need at least 20 of these uh, to refuel starship in any sort of decent amount of time. Uh, it does have a nuclear reactor, but it's not a very powerful one. It's nothing like the ones on nuclear thermal propulsion systems or anything like that. But... Yeah, it's still, it's good enough for a small lander and just nothing like Starship. Now, we don't need to actually bring it to Starship directly and hook it up like with KAS or something like that. We can just use simple logistics as long as it's in render range. And I test it out, but while Starship seems to be able to draw methane and oxygen from the lander, the ISRU lander can't draw from Starship for some reason, which is interesting. Don't know why that is, but... That was the case. Anyway, I extend the radiator, start drilling, and I think I need to bundle in the engineer bonus for this stuff because we're not drilling fast enough. And also I might need to tune down how much heat is generated by the conversion process because, or from the reactor, because our boil off in the tanks is too high even though we have the radiators and everything. So may need to make some adjustments here. So what I'm thinking is that you know, with an engineer in Kerbal Space Program, you get a bonus to the performance of these modules. And I'll just put that in, try and figure out if I can add that bonus indirectly into its efficiency instead of requiring an engineer to have that bonus. So maybe that'll work out. But anyway, this is just the beginning of me finally coming to grips with trying to make a base on Mars and we'll have different modules and all that, but they have to be landed close together in the end. So we have to figure out how to do that. There are complications. Mars's atmosphere is mostly annoying rather than helpful. You can't really fly large loads and control your descent very well. And it is a fairly large planet. Obviously it's not Earth, but accuracy is difficult. And yeah, anyway, 
So we'll see how that works out in future videos as I keep working on this for now. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.